Good morning. So this is 419 computable general equilibrium models. Um, we were just looking at a model, a version of the model where we introduced government spending, we introduced uh, different types of taxes, and we also introduced saving and investment. Um, it is still closed economy. Uh, so let me let me show you the equilibrium system of this. I think this is the end of chapter four. Uh, you can then check uh, with your textbook. Okay. So we have uh, something like this. So we denote uh, using this calligraphic T. Uh, we denote the vector of taxes. Okay. So remember the meaning of each of these taxes. So taus were uh, taxes paid by the firms on top of the average cost. Uh, so this is, remember, tau was uh, tau one, tau two, dot, 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 tau n. So these are paid by the firms. And then we have T. So these are put on the factors. Uh, primary factors. So if a firm uses a particular type of uh, primary factor, uh, so this firm pays the cost. And then we have income taxes. So these taxes uh, were put on uh, households, right? So each household uh, pays a tax out of, out of income. Um, now, the equilibrium system of this uh, extended model uh, could be written in this way. So first we have uh, this output market, okay? So in the output market, we will have uh, as typical uh, P omega, right? Now we also have uh, P M plus one. Remember, this was the investments um, uh, price. Uh, we have this Y on this side. Why? Because there is this intermediate input demand by the firms. Uh, then we have uh, lambda I. This is the investment level, remember. Then we have the public spending. And finally, we have these uh, tax rates. Okay? So if you think about it, uh, both the uh, public goods will, will have some uh, output demand, right? So, so public goods um, affect the uh, spending. Uh, tax rates, as we've seen before, uh, affects the uh, you know income and demand, etc. Uh, so, all of these appear here. Okay, investment, government spending, because these are components of uh, components of demand. Um, then we have the supply and demand of factors. So we have uh, this and the demand by demand for factors again depend on uh, these, right? So in general, um, Taxes in the economy, tax rates in the economy affect both the supply because they affect the uh, decision of the households and they also affect the decision of the firms. Okay, so here I'm putting this calligraphic T here because it is general enough, right? Uh, so a particular income uh, tax, of course, affects that, but income tax in general does not affect the firm's problem, but we still have T here. Um, then we have the uh, zero profit condition. Remember the version of it when we have Taos, right? So that was the earliest example we worked on. So we had the price of value added. Now again, this depends on the taxes because it affects the firm's behavior, right? Optimal behavior by the firms will affect it by these taxes. So the price of value added will be affected by these things. Then we have V again. Uh, we have intermediate input demand, so the cost associated with the intermediate inputs, and then we have this gamma, right? Remember that gamma is this diagonal uh, matrix. On the diagonals, we have 
uh, this tax rate, okay? Uh, these are gross rates, all right? So one plus tau n, right? Uh, so then we have, of course, the revenue function. Now the revenue itself uh, depends on prices, uh, output, right? Because how much, so, the, so this is basically the size of the economy. So uh, in total, uh, how much revenue the government can collect depends on how large the economy is. So then we have this, uh, uh, tax rate, um, then the government have transfers. Now in the general case, again, these transfers, uh, remember could be flexible. So government can have a, a fixed uh, level of transfers. And then the government can also choose transfers, uh, depending on different uh, variables depending on income, depending on uh, prices. Why, for instance, uh, the government can choose to uh, make uh, higher levels of transfer spending to poorer households, for instance. Okay, so in general, transfers could also be written in this way. Then we have the public spending. Okay, then again, in the general case, the government can run a deficit. Okay, so uh, we also have investment and saving in this model. So remember, investment depends on uh, so the investment level and the price index for the investment goods, right? So this will be equal to the saving decision. Again, saving decision uh, depend on these things. Now be careful. Um, so we have S here. Okay. So be careful. So S is different than SV. Uh, this is saving. Uh, this is private saving basically. And this is the supply of factors. Okay. So this is your textbooks notation, uh, possibly not the ideal uh, notation, but it's there. And then, uh, we have the uh, deficit here as well, right? Because uh, according to the macroeconomic, um, um, remember this, so we have, uh, let me use a different color. So if we have consumption, uh, saving, uh, and the tax, uh, so this is, let's say tax, and then, uh, we can have, um, so, all right, let me use a different, let me use, let me use here. So we have uh, consumption, saving, and tax. And then on the spending side, we have consumption, investment, and government spending. Right, uh, sometimes it's denoted by G, of course. Uh, then, then if you uh, cancel C's, then you see the government deficit is related with uh, investment saving equilibrium. And finally, uh, we will have, uh, so let me put this equation here. We will have the definition of uh, the price index for uh, investment goods, right? So it is like this. Yeah, that's all. So let's count the equations again. Let me use green color here. So this is just one equation, right? Here we have N equations. Here we have K equations, okay? Here we have N equations, right? This is one equation, this is one equation. So how many, how many equations? Let's count. We have 2N plus K plus three, right? 2n plus k plus 3. So what are the unknowns? Let's count the unknowns. Well, um, we have 
let, let me use here, so for unknowns, uh, we have n different prices, right? N diff, so, um, so we have P, we have omega, we have Y, then what? Think about it. So these are exogenous. Government decides on these things. So what are the other unknowns? Hmm? Equilibrium requires, uh, this, you know, the same number of unknowns and the same number of equations, right? So we have the investment level because that investment level is determined by the uh, in the you know in the in the market. So I'm uh, household save. Remember, they had uh, CM plus one, right? But in equilibrium, the investment level is an unknown. Then there is this price, PM plus one, okay? Then we also have government spending because we haven't talked about it. It will depend on, it will depend on um, the government's decisions and we also have D, the deficit. So how many unknowns we have? Let's count. N, K, N, so this is 2N plus K, okay? Then we have 2N plus K plus 4. 2N plus K plus 4. So we have one more, we have one additional unknown given our equations. How can this be possible? Well, it is possible because uh, we haven't talked about how can the government decides whether it will run a deficit or not, okay? So government has to decide either, government has to choose either E or D, okay? So in equilibrium, for, for equilibrium to be uh, well-defined, uh, government has to choose one of these things, okay? Either it is gonna choose, uh, because look at this. The total revenue is endogenous, right? Because it depends on prices and the output levels. So the total transfer is also made endogenous, okay? So then this equation can either solve E or D, okay? And to solve E, let's say we want to, uh, we want to have a specific um, deficit level, then this equation tells me how can, uh, you know, how much I can spend as the government or I will tell myself that as the government, I will tell myself that, okay, I have to, I want to make that level of spending E, then this equation again tells me how much I should have, you know, what, what will be my deficit or surplus, of course, uh, depending on, uh, depending on uh, revenues and transfers, okay? So this equation can either solve D, or E, and we have to know one of these, okay? So we have to uh, let the government choose either E or D, okay? So then that's the larger model, uh, larger equilibrium system. Once again, once again, uh, you can, of course, reduce the dynamics of this, you know, reduce the uh, dimension of this system, all right? So it is not, it's not very difficult. So uh, you can, for, for instance, you can write 
this as consumption demand and intermediate input demand, then you're going to find the Leon TF inverse. Uh, then here also uh, you can find, um, you know, price as function of, uh, uh, you know, output prices as functions of uh, factor prices. Then you can do some reduction uh, in this system as well. Okay. But the general general idea is that so in this larger model, uh, we can find lambda i here. As you see, this equation solves uh, investment level. This equation is basically a definition of uh, the price of the uh, the price index for the investment goods. But then uh, this equation. Uh, this one, the, the, this, this government budget constraint basically can either solve spending or deficit, so government has to choose one of them, okay? Then we have 2M plus K plus three unknowns and 2M plus K plus three uh, equations. So our equilibrium system is again a square system and we can solve it, okay? So existence again, of course, requires, um, you know, the existence of the Leon TF inverse and other continuity assumptions. Uh, then you can define this unit simplex, then you can apply um, the fixed point theory. Okay. So that's it for this chapter. And as I said earlier, I'm gonna pass chapter five. Maybe we can return back to it uh, if we have time later on. But this is all for chapter four. Um, so let me stop for a moment to answer your questions. So this is the largest model that you will see uh, in this class, the, 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 the most complicated one, because we have three types of taxes. Uh, one paid by the firms, the other paid again by the firms, depending on their usage of factors, because it is factor specific taxes. And then we have income taxes paid by the households. Uh, then we have uh, a government that can run a deficit. Okay, so this government collects taxes. Uh, there's this tax revenue. Tax revenue is spent partly on, uh, uh, partly on the transfer. So uh, Transfers could be endogenous, so uh, the government can tell me that, okay, I will give you that, I will, I will, as, a, as a citizen, you will receive that amount of transfer because your income is equal to that, etc. cetera. Um, then the government also makes uh, some public spending. You know, uh, this is basically uh, your, your G in your macro models. Then there could be a deficit as well, okay? And on the, um, on the saving investment side, uh, we extended the household preferences with this saving uh, assumption. We denote, by, we denote it by uh, CN plus one. So uh, we treat it like uh, as if you know, it is another good, right? Um, then there is of course uh, a saving investment equilibrium, right? And government deficits part of this because at the macro level, uh, you have to satisfy this uh, fundamental macroeconomic identity, okay? So total leakages must be equal to total in injections, right? Um, so consumption plus saving plus tax must be equal to uh, consumption plus investment plus government spend, okay? So that part was, you know, what you knew before, uh, but in this model, it is also true. Um, then at the end, uh, we're going to have as, you know, a number of unknowns, a number of equations, uh, and then we can uh, arrive at the square system by forcing the government to choose either the spending and then that amount of spending uh, allows me to see what the deficit is, or uh, the government will put a deficit target, then within that deficit target, uh, it will find the public spending level, okay? 
So now if you have any questions, uh, I can answer them. Uh, if, you, if you have some comments, I can, I can respond to them. Okay. So then let me uh, let me continue with this with this new uh, topic. Um, let me open a new page. All right. So uh, most of the stuff that I will cover in in this lecture uh, is from chapter six. Okay. So in chapter six, uh, it is about uh, database and calibration, model calibration. Okay, model um, calibration. So, um, Hocam, şu an ekranınız yok ama bizde. Evet, okay, thank you very much for that. Okay. Uh, so most of the stuff uh, in in today's lectures and in the, in the in the remaining part uh, will be building on chapter six, but I will also uh, you know travel outside the textbook uh, to tell you something about uh, calibration. So the idea is this: so remember the concept of of uh, social accounting metrics. Right, so this is basically a matrix. Uh, so it has rows and columns, right? Uh, and we collect all the transaction, you know, all the uh, all the information basically about uh, the transactions in the economy. Right, so we have the agents. Sometimes we have regions. We have sectors. We have firms. Uh, we have different types of accounts. So uh, all the transactions, uh, you know, imagine the model we just studied. So in there, uh, there are, uh, a, there's a government, there are people who save, uh, there are firms investing, firms are producing stuff, households are supplying primary factors. So there could be uh, many, 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 many transactions in the economy. And this social accounting matrix is a way of collecting all this information. So it is basically a database, right? Uh, and in actual economies, if you if you if you have um, if you have the uh, knowledge of if you have the power of collecting all the data, then you have the you have this database, right? Um, and then you have the model. All right. So so then uh, you also have have the model, right? And as you know, uh, the model is is uh, in general. Uh, a relationship between a set of relationships between uh, your exogenous variables, your endogenous variables, and your parameters. Okay. Um, so in the calibration exercise, um, uh, we want to use model and uh, the social accounting metrics to know something about the parameters. Okay. So so that's the calibration. So we want to know, uh, uh, for instance. 2019 Turkish economy, I mean, how can I apply a particular model, all right? Let's say the model in chapter four, okay? Uh, how can you use the data, okay, for uh, Turkish economy at the year 2019 to learn about the parameters of chapter four, right? Because in that model, uh, you have uh, uh, preferences, okay? Uh, you have uh, technologies and you have endowments, right? So in a simple name, classical genetic model, so these are, these are represented by, so for instance, the preferences are represented by uh, utility functions, right? Technologies are represented by production functions and there are uh, input output coefficients, etc. And there are endowments in the economy, like right? labor endowment, capital endowment, land endowment, right? So uh, in the model, these are uh, logical unknowns, logical, I mean, I mean, 
uh, we assume that in the model we know them, but if I use a particular model uh, for a research purpose, for a you know historically uh, given economy such as the Turkish economy in the year 2019, then I want to know about these parameters. I want to know uh, something about the preferences of households in the Turkish economy in the year 2019. I want to know something about the technologies used by the firms operating in the Turkish economy in the year 2019. And I want to know the endowments of these agents, endowments of the people, uh, again, in the Tur living in the Turkish economy in the year 2009, right? So calibration means in this philosophical sense, in this, in this larger sense, to use a model and the data together to learn something about the parameters, to learn something about the, the inputs of the model, right? Because when we solve the model, we assume that I know um, X and I know alpha. So then I find the solution in this way, right? I find the solution in this way. So this is how you solve a model. So this is solution. In calibration, we do more like we know something about uh, X data. Okay, we know something about uh, yeah, Y data. And then I have uh, alpha uh, depending on these data and the model relationship, model solution, okay? So I will use the solution model. So I will, I will use the solution of the model and I will use some data. Data is coming from here, right? Data is coming from here. Then uh, I will learn something about the parameters, okay? And I will show you how, of course. Um, so now we have about five minutes. Let me stop here uh, before the break. So I can now, uh, again, answer your questions if you have any or respond to your comment. Uh, or we can continue after the break. So if you have anything to ask i mean if i if i left something unclear so again in the next hour i will give you a more realistic sam slightly more realistic than what you what you've seen before uh, in two weeks uh, two weeks ago um, so it will be a, a simple macroeconomic sam uh, social accounting matrix then we will understand all the incomes and all the expenditures in the economy uh, we will understand different types of accounts and different types of agents. Then I will tell you uh, what calibration is in, 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 in great detail. Okay. And then I will, if you have time, I will show you in the third hour, I will show you uh, how you can calibrate um, uh, production function parameters, how you can calibrate uh, utility function parameters. So imagine calibration is like, you know, uh, so it is like uh, the thermometer, right? So 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 uh, thermometer uses uh, what mercury, right? The the the, the element. So uh, we know uh, how it expands depending on uh, depending on I mean how so how the mercury element expands depending on um, uh, the temperature, right? So uh, we, we calibrate uh, this expansion in, in, in such a way that so our thermometer shows us the, the room temperature, okay? Because there's this uh, relationship between the uh, volume of mercury and the, and the temperature, uh, uh, in that particular uh, place, uh, so you can you can 
uh, you can adjust it for uh, Celsius degrees, or you can adjust it for Fahrenheit degrees, for instance. Okay, so it is it is the calibration, for instance, right? Because you know something about the data and you have a model in your mind, right? Uh, then you can uh, choose your uh, unit of measurement. In that case, uh, it is like a parameter. Okay. Or you can sometimes hear about calibration of medical, uh, medical, uh, you know, tools or medical machines, right? Uh, I don't know these uh, these uh, tools that you can use uh, to 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 measure your blood pressure, for instance. So sometimes their uh, uh, their settings are distorted in time. So uh, the uh, the tool must be uh, recalibrated to, to, to give you the correct measurement, okay? So it is like that. Only this time we are gonna apply the idea in, in economic models, okay? Again, after the end of today's lecture, you will have an, an understanding of it. All right, then uh, it is the break time. Um, so it is 9.41 now, um, let's meet at 9.55, okay? 9.55. And text your friends, I mean, uh, this is an important topic, so it's better uh, they attend the uh, live lecture. Okay, I will see you at 9.55.